In this video, we'll take a quick glance into the inline editing capabilities of the grid. I'll just briefly show you how to use it, leaving the details for later. DHX Gantt provides two options for editing content, with the help of the Lightbox Edit form, by using inline editors in the grid area. Inline editing enables you to make any changes right through the grid, create and update tasks, set connections between them, define the start and end dates, or modify the duration. All via the built-in editors. You can make a column editable by adding the editor property to it. The editor object should have the type property that should match one of the defined types of editors, and the map to property that binds the editor to the property of the task object. The rest of settings are specific to certain types of editors. For example, you can specify minimum and maximum values for the number and date editors. You can also define a new type of editor by adding a specially formatted object into the Gantt config. The public API of editors is quite extensive, providing methods and events to control every aspect of their work. For example, let's say we want to specify the colors of tasks. There's no built-in color picker, so we'll need to implement one. To do so, we add an extra column to the grid and place a color picker inside of it. Right now, I'll use the HTML5 color input, although in practice, this may be not the best choice for real-life usage. For a start, I'll copy the code example from the documentation and use it as a template. Then make sure to rename the control and change the show function to create a color input. We won't need the hide method since our input doesn't need any destructor or post-processing after it's hidden, so we can leave it empty. The next two important methods are setValue and getValue. The former is called when the editor is open to populate it with the value from the task, and the latter is called when the user saves the editor. The return value will be applied to the task object. The next step is the isChanged function. Since editors can be opened and closed easily, we only want to trigger data change when the user has modified editor value. Inside this method, we'll need to compare the initial value provided to the editor with the current one and return boolean true if values differ. Returning true will update the task with the new value. Returning false will simply close the editor. The isValid method works as it sounds. Returning false will tell Gantt that the input value is not valid and should be discarded. The save method is needed for complex editors, such as predecessor selectors, that make multiple changes rather than modify a single property of a task, so we won't need it. And finally, the focus method that should put browser focus into our editor. This should give us a ready-to-use inline editor for selecting task colors. The next step is to add a new column to the task grid and attach an editor to it. Just add a new column to the grid config and attach the editor config to it. Note that the type property of the color editor must match the name we used for our editor above. Map to value will define a property of the task object for the editor to write values to. We use the color property there, since Gantt will automatically apply colors from this property. Now if I add some values to the data, you should see it in action. As a final touch, we'll properly display colors inside the color column. It's done via a template like it's shown in one of the previous videos. We'll define a template that will return a div element with specified background color style, and apply some styles to display it correctly. In case you want to use a proper color picker widget, the code won't differ a lot. Let me show you how to integrate a third-party color picker. To keep things simple, I use a jQuery plugin named Spectrum. You'll find a link in the description below. The first step is to add library files to our sample. After that, let's update our control. I'll define a variable, where we'll store a reference to our editor instance. We'll need to call it a destructor when the input is hidden. First, we need to modify our show method. When it's called, we need to initialize and display the color picker widget. Note that I call the show method from a timeout. It's needed to ensure that we'll attempt to display it after all HTML elements are inserted. Next, we'll need to define the hide method. We'll call the destructor when the editor is closed. The rest of the methods are relatively intuitive and don't differ too much from our original implementation. We need to modify the way the value is obtained from the control. After it's done, everything should work as expected. Ready to try it out yourself? Download a free Gantt trial version via the link in the video description and follow our video tutorial.
If you're interested in any other topics for building your own Gantt chart, leave your comments here and follow our YouTube channel to stay tuned.